Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Keith Lewis. I appreciate you watching this video. And I guess you're watching this video because you, somebody you know, maybe even somebody you love, think they might have hypothyroidism, or at least thyroid type symptoms, or low functioning thyroid type symptoms. You know, maybe you've already been diagnosed with, or maybe you've been to the doctor, lab tests were performed, he said, no, you don't. But what are the symptoms of hypothyroidism? Many of you, I'm sure, have been on Google, looked on Google, and see a whole myriad of different symptoms that fit you. Now, are you? But your doctor says, no, you don't have hypothyroidism. You know, one of the most common, um, I guess, symptoms or complaints that we see with our patients is number one is fatigue. And I mean fatigue. Not just being tired a day or two here or there. I'm talking about tired all the time. A disabling type of fatigue. A fatigue where, you know, it affects your family life. It affects your work life. It affects your life in every facet. Um, you go to bed tired, you sleep tired, you wake up tired, um, and you would be very, very content just to lay on the couch and do nothing because it is so disabling. But again, it's not some um, issue with motivation. It's a hormonal issue. Other symptoms of hypothyroidism include, um, you know, hair loss. One of the most common complaints that we see with patients, they, they're, they're astounded, fearful about the amount of hair they find in their shower drain every day. Handfuls, many of them tell me. That's again a classic symptom of hypothyroidism. Another real common symptom is weight gain, or at least an inability to lose weight. Yes, we all have that battle. But this is a situation where it doesn't matter how much you reduce your calories, it doesn't matter how much you reduce your protein content or intake, your carbohydrate intake, fat intake, you just can't lose any weight. And in fact, the less you eat, the more weight you gain. Again, commonly we see that with hypothyroidism, but also a complex between the adrenal glands and the thyroid glands, affecting blood sugar metabolism and your ability to lose weight. Other symptoms we see are constipation and chronic constipation. You know, I saw a patient uh, a few weeks ago and she said she has a bowel movement once every seven to 10 days. I've even seen patients in the past that said they have a bowel movement once a month, if you can imagine that. But again, very common with hypothyroid type problems. Other symptoms might include an extreme dryness in skin, you know, the old alligator looking skin, um, brittleness of your hair. S other simple symptoms might be, you know, loss of the outer third of your eyebrow, ridges in your fingernails um, are very common. And another, I think, common tag diagnosis, and I don't even know if I want to call it a diagnosis, but many people experience depression or have been diagnosed with depression when experiencing hypothyroid problems. And in fact, I think it's more of a frustration issue more than a depression issue that causes these types of problems. Um, and again, oftentimes misdiagnosed you know, by, the, by the family physician or even the endocrinologist for that matter. But those are just a few of the symptoms we see with our patients. And um, you, know, you can have two types of hypothyroidism. One is a primary hypothyroid problem where you know, your body's just not producing enough thyroid hormone which could be a problem, and that may be remedied by taking Synthroid, or maybe Armour Thyroid, or maybe Cytomel, but a lot of times not. But you can also develop something called a secondary hypothyroid problem, which isn't a problem with the production of the amount of thyroid hormone, but other things that are happening. that We can understand um, through proper laboratory testing. So again, I think the testing is the key. I have so many patients that come in to see me uh, with all the symptoms that I just mentioned, uh, they're very frustrated. Many of them are crying. They don't know what to do. And I ask them, have you had your thyroid tested? And of course, 99.9% .9 say, yes, I did. So I'll request the records and look at the laboratory test. And typically the only test that was performed was TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH is the gold standard for determining whether or not a patient has hypothyroidism. However, there are about 12 other thyroid markers which indicate um, low-functioning thyroid that many times aren't performed. No, most of the time they're not performed. Occasionally, we'll have a patient come in, they've had their TSH check, normal, check their total T4, which is thyroxin, tetra, iodothyronine, and uh, you know, with those patients, a lot of times that's even normal, but they still have all these symptoms. And again, links to frustration you know, for our patients. So doing the proper laboratory testing, you know, is really vital. And just briefly, you know, you should obviously check TSH as far as your lab tests are concerned, total T4, free T4, 
free T3, T3 uptake, reverse T3, and maybe another test that's uh, very rarely performed even by endocrinologists right now are checking for thyroid antibodies. One would be thyroid peroxidized antibody, the other would be thyroglobulin binding antibody. And uh, these antibodies are important because it gives us clues as to whether or not are you dealing with a true hypothyroid issue or are you dealing with an autoimmune problem where your immune system is attacking its own thyroid gland. That condition is called Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, immune system attacking thyroid gland, which causes a breakdown or over time can cause some destruction within the thyroid gland itself. Bottom line, it makes it very dysfunctional, which again can be very confusing for a lot of doctors who don't deal with thyroid problems all the time because you know they do TSH, they check T4, maybe they check free T3 and free T4 and they're still normal, but they don't check the antibodies. So we're missing something, there's a missing link there that if it's not addressed, you know, you're gonna continue having the symptoms. Doesn't matter how much thyroid hormone you take, whether it's natural or synthetic, you know, you're not gonna get any better unless that's addressed. So again, autoimmune thyroid, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, very important. We find other glandular systems, you know, my practice is, is a functional medicine practice and when we look at any patient, you know, we just don't look at you as a thyroid gland or an adrenal gland or a heart or a lung. We look at the whole you, you know, your whole person. And all these glandular systems, all these organ systems, all work and interrelate together. And they all have to work together in, in, in I guess, in like a symphony. Um, and especially when you're dealing with hormones, you know, hormones are extremely sensitive to change. Hormones are extremely um, um, sensitive to any, any external or internal stimuli, which can throw them out of balance. And our goal is, again, doing the proper diagnostic testing, proper hormonal testing, to make sure hormonal levels are in balance. You know, many people don't realize too that uh, the thyroid gland and the adrenal gland work hand in hand in terms of body function, in terms of metabolism. And if you don't check the adrenal glands at the time you're checking the thyroid, again, you miss something. Another missing link are these adrenal glands. You know, the adrenal glands are the stress handling glands in our body. They produce a hormone called cortisol, and cortisol is the stress hormone. And we probably know about cortisol because uh, cortisol is the belly fat hormone. You know, we've seen that on TV in the past. Uh, but there are other hormones produced by the adrenal glands. Um, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, uh, androstenedione, um, DHT, melatonin. A lot of other hormones that are produced in our body are also produced by the adrenal glands. They are, and the adrenals have a direct effect on thyroid function. So again, you don't want to overlook that. We also find, uh, you know, through proper testing, and, and a lot of our testing is all derived from our history. You know, our patient history is extremely important, and you know, the history that we perform at our office is probably, and you'll, you'll notice when you do our history uh, online, if you'd like, or we can do it face-to-face, -face, is very, very thorough, very, very in-depth, because the history gives us clues. It gives us clues as to where you've been in the past, physiologically, you know, with your health history, but also gives us clues as to maybe where you're headed, but maybe even more important than that, what diagnostic test do we need to perform to accurately um, assess your condition? And then once we accurately assess your condition, then we can do some things to actually move forward and try to create a treatment uh, plan to, to get you well again. Um, so again, I'm sure many of you are frustrated and, and I certainly don't blame you. Most of what I see patient-wise in my functional medicine practice are patients with thyroid and adrenal problems. So that's an area that I you know, have a special interest in, I've had additional training in, and I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on how all that works and how that dynamic between these different organ and glandular systems work. And, and even thyroid gland, how it affects your brain. Um, you know, I have a lot of patients come in, they have brain fog, they got a sense of confusion, mental fatigue, you know, they think they have Alzheimer's disease, for crying out loud. A lot of these people are 35 years old. And in, in reality, it's not the case at all. It's usually a thyroid adrenal connection affecting how your brain functions and your brain works. Again, part of our evaluation process. So as you start, when you look at all, on all these different um, um, parameters of testing, you know, whether it's through the history, through salivary hormone testing, through stool testing, through blood laboratory testing, you know, that gives us pieces to this puzzle called you. And the more pieces to this puzzle called you we have, the more clear and the more definitive you know, your problem becomes. And again, once we have all these puzzle pieces put together, 
you know, we can come up with a working, working reasonable plan of getting you back to good health again. Most of our plans are pretty simple. They consist of exercise, they consist of diet, we do put patients on nutritional supplementation, and we do some things to also work with the body-mind connection, you know, if we get, we find that's necessary. But it's a very, very comprehensive plan. You know, something I don't think you're going to typically find in a typical doctor's office, because unfortunately in the United States right now, we have become so micro-specialized, you know, in um, treating any condition. You know, you have a heart problem, you go to a cardiologist. You have a lung problem, you go see a pulmonologist. You've got a kidney problem, you go to a nephrologist. I mean, the, the problem is a lot of these doctors don't communicate, you know, and so no one's really looking at the whole you. So I guess the bottom line with this video is this, is number one, if you've got the symptoms that I talked about or the symptoms you've read about on Google, you owe it to yourself, you know, to set up a consultation with us. We offer a preliminary consultation via telephone or face-to-face. -face. It's about, takes about 15 minutes just to make sure you have a good fit with our practice. Because one thing we don't do, you know, we don't take patients we don't think we can help. And I believe truly that the reason the majority of our patients see extremely positive results in their treatment is because we don't take people we can't help. So I guess I stack the deck a little bit, but we do have great, great uh, um, percentages of improvement with our patients. But anyway, after that preliminary, con preliminary consultation, we at that point then can determine whether or not, number one, they're a good fit for this practice. Number two, can we help you or not? Now at that point, we move further into a more extensive um, health history. And uh, at that point, and after that point, talk about diagnostic testing and how to move you know, further uh, forward you know, with the correction of whatever your condition might be. So anyway, so if you're interested, you can certainly contact us. Our you know, website is healthylifedoctors.com. You can certainly contact our office. We have an office in uh, Columbus or Upper Arlington, Ohio. Um, we can do this face to face, we can do it via telephone, via Skype, FaceTime, there's a lot of different ways now through telemedicine that we can actually um, consult with you, help you. Even with the diagnostic testing now, a lot of the, the testing that we perform are performed at kits, some of them performed at your own home, some you can have performed in a laboratory in your hometown. But anyway, if this sounds like something you're interested in, um, we certainly would like to hear from you and we certainly would like to be part of your healthcare team you know, getting you from where you are right now to where you really want to be. So again, this is Dr. Keith Lewis. Thanks for watching this video, and I'm sure we'll be talking soon.